Hi everyone and welcome to another Scale Model Shed video and I have finally received in the post Tamir's new 148F4B Phantom. So let's take a look. The instruction booklet is business as usual Tamir. And as with all modern Tamiya kits, you get these fantastic poster style layouts of the schemes available. And this is needless to say that all the plastic is crisp, flash free and beautifully detailed. Now I've been looking forward to this kit for a while so let's get straight into it. So when you start assembling this kit, one of the first things you notice is that the engineering is incredibly tight tolerance. This makes cleanup extra important to keep those gaps perfect. It's also nice that Tamiya provides you with recesses so you don't get any glue near those panel gaps. Vallejo model colour is ideal for brush painting and I always add a drop or two of VMS's acrylic paint retarder and a drop or two of tap water. The base that the cockpit is mounted on also forms the nose wheel well. So this is now painted and assembled. One thing I did find a little bit strange with this kit is that Tamiya didn't provide you with any decals for the side cockpit instrument panels. And I could have bought some photo etch but I decided to take up the challenge of painting them by hand. Now I haven't got the eyesight or the skill to paint the smallest buttons by hand so I dry brushed them and they turned out okay. Some simulated wear on some of the edges was picked out with an AK weathering pencil. 
The main pilot's cockpit panel was first painted in sky grey and then the decal was applied. So moving away from the front nose section, we paint the inside of the exhaust nozzles. And these were first primed in black and then painted in cockpit green. The cockpit and the engines are then assembled into the two halves of the fuselage. And you can't go wrong with their positioning as they are located by two large pins. The top section of the fuselage is cleverly positioned. It removes any requirement to sort out a seam line. After drilling the required holes in the lower wing section, the upper wing wheel well is primed black and painted white. It's then given a coat of semi-gloss lacquer before being weathered with some deep brown panel line wash. The barely visible front section of the engines on the centre wing spar, I paint with AK Extreme Metal Dark Aluminium. The spar and wheel well assembly is then glued to place on the lower wing. The join of the wing to the fuselage is absolutely perfect. Ok, so now it's starting to look like a phantom, the air intakes are now assembled. Once the inside of the air intakes are painted, these are then glued into position into the fuselage. I'm going to paint the horizontal stabiliser separately, so I only leave the stabiliser mount in position for painting. This is the first point of the build where you need to make a decision as to which markings you're going to go with and also if you're going to build the wings in their folded or extended positions. Same as the horizontal stabilizers, the vertical stabilizer is to be painted white, so it's left off and painted separately. 
Now on to painting the front section of the canopy. The kit provides you with a set of masking templates that will need to be cut out, but I purchased this canopy mask set from Dead Design Models. This set gives you two masks per window, with the first mask being slightly smaller than the second mask. This means that the black primer is slightly wider than the frame colour and gives a fantastic 3D effect. I mask off the armoured glass section of the front windshield and spray the inside face with a very thin layer of X23 clear blue. I don't need to glue the front canopy section as it clicks into position and holds itself in place. So now it's time to prime the model. First I clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. And then I spray it with one thin layer of Mr Surfacer 1500 black. I start the painting process on the underside of the model. I start by mottling white on all of the panels but avoiding the panel lines. Then it's just a matter of building up the white in thin layers until you achieve the desired effect. Then, once again in white, this process is repeated for the top surfaces of the model. Then I use AK Real Colors Light Gull Grey as the aircraft's base color and build it up over the top of the modeling in thin layers. Once that's done, I mask off the control surfaces and paint them in white.
so that's the model's base colour completed and it's got some nice tonal variation. I then start highlighting some of the panel lines using a white. And it looks to me like I need to practice on keeping a straight line with the airbrush. I also use an airbrush stencil to do some white mottling. I then go the other way and go to a dark gold grey. Here I concentrate some heavier mottling to the top surfaces of the fuselage. I also use this darker grey to create some staining effects and also to create some variation in tones from panel to panel. All the areas that are to be painted in a natural metal colour are masked off. And then painted in a gloss black. Then I choose to finish all these areas in AK Extreme Metal Polished Aluminium. Then once all the painting's complete, the whole model gets a coat of gloss varnish. Now I didn't really want to use the decals for the tread plates on this model but as you can see the decals got a very thin black line all the way around the edge of it so I thought I'd go with the decal and see how I got on. Now I think that Tamiya decals are quite thick and they do take quite a bit of setting in but on a plus side they are quite difficult to break. And on another plus of doing this scheme, and I didn't realise this when I chose this scheme, it seems that this aircraft was repainted during deployment. So for this scheme you don't apply all the hundreds of stencils that go everywhere which is a bonus because they take forever.
I didn't apply any glue when attaching the horizontal stabilizers because the whole assembly is actually held together by the arrestor hook. I then give the decals at least 24 hours to dry. I then take a 2000 Trizac pad and with this I do a couple of things. Firstly I carefully take the shine off the top of all the decals. And this gives a really good key for the upcoming satin varnish that will seal them. I also lightly go over all parts of the gloss varnish for the same reason and at the same time I carefully flat any muck that may be in the gloss varnish layer. And after doing this we have a smooth flat layer to apply the final satin varnish. So this here is a good advert for never gluing down your canopies until you have finished painting. Now the paint might not get in but you can bet your bottom dollar the varnish will. And as you can see here the whole inside of the canopy is covered in a fine dust. Now this isn't a problem because it just wipes off with a cotton bud but if you'd have glued the canopy down you'd have a nightmare. And here you can see that nice effect that those offset masks create. So here's what we've got left. So it's mainly exhaust nozzles, seats, undercarriage and under wing pylons. I leave what I can on the sprues and I paint everything in Mr. Surfacer 1500 black. And then I paint what needs to be in Mr. Hobby flat white. The seats are painted and given a coat of gloss varnish. I then add the kit's decal for the seat belts and yeah, we'll come back to this. Okay, so onto the main canopy. This one's got the usual seam running down it, although it's not too bad on this one. I first carefully remove it with a new blade. and then working up I carefully sand it back. I buff it with a 4000 pad before polishing it with Tamiya's fine polishing compound.
Before painting the canopy I test that it fits. Then once it's fitting properly, I mask it using Revel Colour Stop for the centre sections. Here I'm applying the second slightly larger mask that slightly overlaps the primer. Once the gold grey is applied, I then give the canopy a coat of gloss varnish before applying the decals. then finishing off with a coat of semi-gloss before removing the masking. So onto the exhaust nozzles, I start off by spraying each nozzle with a coat of Alclad Jet Exhaust. Here on the left you can see its colour with its nice coppery tinge. To finish the nozzle off, I dry brush inside and out with Vallejo's Metal Color Aluminium. Around the back of the engines I use AK Extreme Metal Jet Exhaust which is much bluer in color. Now on to weathering and I needed to do something with these plain grey walkways. So I decided to lightly spray them with AK Real Colour Dark Gold Grey and then very lightly sand that paint off with a 2000 Trizact pad. This worked really well giving a nice bleached out and worn down effect whilst leaving the pale grey in the panel lines and the rivets. Now the whole aircraft is given an oil wash with a mix of sepia and smoke aptilunged oils. The oil wash is worked into the panel lines and then the drying process is sped up using an airbrush.
Streaks on the control surfaces are created using a small dot of Abtelan smoke and then a brush lightly moistened in white spirit. Particularly dirty panel lines are detailed using the same wash as we used earlier on the entire model. These are corrected and adjusted using a brush moistened in white spirit. One of the major upside to oils is that you can just experiment and if you do go wrong you can just wipe it off and start again. The downside is that they do take a long time to dry. And these details can remain wet for a couple of days which can make it difficult to handle the model. Now this is my favourite bit about oils, you put them on neat and this is important to use a dry brush and you can get seamless blending. Now you've got to keep working the oil around and it's not quick but the results are really really good. And again you can adjust it with a small amount of white spirit or you can get a cloth, wipe it off completely and start again. I think subtlety is key here, a tiny bit of shading around the panel lines makes such a difference to a model.
So after all those weathering processes, this is the result. So moving on to the underside of the model, I want to use this image as inspiration. So I'll start using yellow and faded yellow oils. And at first I thought I might be able to create that look by merely streaking the oils down the fuselage. but it pretty quickly became apparent that that wasn't going to look great. So I wiped off the large majority of these oils with a dry cloth, creating a large stained area, where I then created individual streaks using sepia oil. Again, with a little bit of dry blending. When you're trying to dry blend the oils, if you do accidentally get the brush a little bit damp, you can easily dry it back again with an airbrush. Ok so with the weathering largely complete on the main body of the model, we move back to assembling all the bits and bobs to complete it. Right then, seats part two. And after removing those seat belt decals with microset, what was I thinking? I picked up an Eduard seat belt photo etch kit. So first I moved all the bits on the current seats that I didn't need. And then started on the photo etch. And alright, it's probably cheating, but they do look better.
For the wheels and the undercarriage, I use AK panel liner for grey and blue camouflage as a pin wash. After wiping panel liner all over it, I pick out the details again on the wheels with Baleo model colour off-white. Most of the undercarriage and the wheel weld doors on this kit can be assembled without using any glue. And at this point, if you can get away without using glue, all to the good. Just a quick return back to weathering and I thought I needed to do something with these decals, especially the red ones. So I used a neutral grey filter to create some distressing. as well as adding some oil shading to the bottom of the cockpit frame. I also thought I should do something with the horizontal stabiliser as that bar should be a darker material. Luckily enough it wasn't glued in so I could just easily remove it for painting. The Sparrow missiles were finished in a satin varnish and then were wiped over with a thinned down wash of AK panel liner. This was then lightly dabbed off with a cloth.
Okay, so that's it. Apologies for the long video. I couldn't work out which parts to miss out, so I just put it all in. Also, apologies for the lighting in some parts of the video. The camera had a couple of weird moments. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel. And now for some photos of the completed model. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.